Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Katarina Kravchuk. You can't hear me? All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was deciding until the very last moment uh, which language should I choose uh, because um, in the program I was um, uh, supposed to speak Ukrainian, but I see that no one is actually having headphones for English, so I better um, switch to English. Thank you. Um, so I represent here an initiative called Lanka. Lanka in Ukrainian means link. And uh, this Arts Link event um, is something which is uh, very resonating with, with what we do. Um, our initiative started um, um, in the first days of war. And uh, we decided that despite the turmoil that is happening uh, around us, uh, we would like to think about the future. And we decided that every week we will uh, be meeting with our team uh, twice per week and uh, thinking about the future and the relation between the culture and development. And today, um, my task is to uh, present a report uh, which uh, was um, commissioned by um, Cultural Relations Platform. Uh, this is an organization um, of European Union. It's actually a project um, that is connecting uh, different stakeholders from culture, from the policy level, also from um, uh, independent institutions uh, in Europe and outside of Europe, all over the globe, and connect them uh, in order uh, to make um, culture um, higher on the political agenda. And uh, this report uh, was commissioned actually by the um, director Department of um, uh, European Commission responsible for enlargement of uh, European Union. So actually this was done in the framework of uh, Ukraine joining uh, the European Union. Um, and this is a, a brief timeline of what we, do, of what we did. Um, uh, so we started our work in August. Um, uh, we had only one month to gather all possible data available for Ukrainian uh, culture and uh, creative economy, both in Ukraine and abroad. And it was only two of us, um, me and my colleague Anna Karnauch, uh, doing this report. So um, it was really a um, short amount of time to prepare it. Uh, but why was it Im important to do it so fast? Because the European Union was planning to support Ukrainian institutions um, starting from September, um, different um, um, calls for midterm support were starting and they uh, wanted to have some um, real data from the ground uh, so that they based their support um, on the real needs um, of the cultural stakeholders. So our task was actually to define the needs uh, and produce some recommendations. Um, in order to do that, uh, we explored um, almost 200 institutions. We focused our uh, research on institutions. Uh, we, we tried to cover all regions of Ukraine and um, um, the major uh, sectors and major institutions within the sectors. Unfortunately, there is not much included from the independent cultural um, actors, uh, artists, uh, curators, and so on. Um, but that's that's the basis we could do very fast. And we had some in-depth inter interviews and also um, an online questionnaire. And afterwards, we had a um, workshop in Warsaw. Actually, it was just one month ago. And we verified um, the discoveries of this report with the 25 stakeholders uh, from Ukraine, uh, based in Ukraine and not only in Ukraine. And um, uh, we tried to invite both um, independent and, uh, and public uh, sector and uh, also individual artists and curators. Uh, and I'm happy to see here some uh, people who were actually present um, uh, during this workshop and um, why it is important, because actually the, the goal of this workshop was to produce recommendations for development and for support, and uh, these recommendations are the closed document. It, it was the requirement of European Union that it should be a closed document for them, like instruction for action, but they um, uh, allow us to share this information, and uh, I'm very happy to be here and actually has this opportunity to pass this information uh, forward, and I hope um, that my colleagues who were at this workshop 
uh, would also uh, pass um, the narratives of, of our conversations um, months ago in Warsaw. I think it was quite valuable. Um, uh, so um, I would not be uh, telling a lot about the report since uh, it's, uh, it's available online. Um, you have it, the link for it on, um, in the program. Here is a um, QR code for it as well. I just maybe uh, highlight some um, information about the process, what was not included in the report and uh, how difficult it uh, was for us to produce it and um, what uh, are the main findings in the end. Uh, so first, the limitations. We have to understand that uh, within the very short lim uh, limit of time, uh, we couldn't go deep in, into the regions. So actually, this uh, um, study was done mainly in the big cities. Also, um, there was an issue about relocated organizations. Um, European Union wanted to know how many organizations, institutions have been relocated and where. And unfortunately, there is no legal procedures to uh, actually explore that, to actually um, uh, uh, define whether the institutions, institution was relocated or not. Uh, and um, we couldn't actually explore that. But what we know, and our data confirmed the data of Ukrainian cultural foundations, that 80% of cultural actors and 80% um, of institutions are, are staying in Ukraine and 20% are abroad. So these more or less are the proportions. Um, and uh, outreach, of course, um, we uh, approximately we, uh, we talked uh, directly and indirectly to about 300 people, which is not too much um, taking into consideration the, the size of the country, but still um, it's some reference that we can uh, talk about. And capacity of respondents. Um, during the war, it was not easy to reach people. Uh, sometimes um, uh, institutions and um, leaders of the institutions had been busy with the ongoing emergency. And also sometimes it was difficult for them to think even, uh, even though uh, we were uh, giving the structured um, uh, outline for the interview, just, about, uh, just because of the stress, uh, it was quite difficult to think about the uh, strategy of the future ongoing emergency um, makes, it, um, makes um, the difference, unfortunately. Uh, so how, how did we select the institutions? We tried to, um, to select those that have uh, um, um, a kind of role model in their sector, so they are important, and other institutions are referring to them as a good example of, of um, leading in their sector. Uh, also, we tried to keep the regional balance and, try, and talked as much uh, as we can uh, to the organizations from occupied territories who are relocated or uh, to those who are now based in east and uh, south of Ukraine. Uh, but also, we, we tried to cover the whole country and uh, also we tried to keep the balance of public and private institutions. Uh, and also for the interviews, we, we tried to, to invite people who have the hel helicopter view uh, on what is happening in culture in Ukraine and can speak not only for their sector or their institution, but for the culture in general. Um, I hope you can see it. Uh, if not, all of that is in the report. Uh, so I would just um, tell you who was participating mainly the largest amount of the institutions came from uh, cultural heritage and from performing arts. We are, were able to cover majority of the largest theaters in Ukraine. And um, uh, also creative industry was uh, the big, uh, the, one of the biggest sectors who joined the report, but uh, um, there was an uh, opportunity for multiple responses. So sometimes people selected both their industry and creative industries. That is why it's so big. Also, a lot of educational institutions participated. Uh, uh, largest uh, Ukrainian universities, um, arts academia, um, music academia, and, uh, and so on. And uh, visual art, uh, audiovisual art, literature and pub publishing, design, um, and audio arts. Uh, we didn't include uh, creative economy as such in the report um, because um, from what we explored earlier, uh, the market-based industries were not suffering so much, even though they 
lost the market, they were able to uh, reorient a bit to the export, while the core culture um, was suffering um, the most. And also we tried to reach state and local governmental body in the field of culture and creative industry. Uh, so we asked this question, where was your institution based? Um, most of the respondents were based in Kyiv or Kyiv region and also in Lviv region. And you see we tried to cover um, um, the majority of the regions, uh, at least one organization. Um, that was the question, where did you, where was the institution based before uh, February 24th? And now there was a question, has the location of your institution changed? And we had this 21% that replied yes. And the majority of the institutions moved uh, either to Lviv or Western uh, regions or to uh, various European countries or to Kyiv. This is, we know that, but the, the data also confirmed that. Um, and then we asked the question whether the activity of your institution had changed after February 24th. <clears throat> you see the vast majority replied yes. And um, we asked how, how it did it change. So uh, the majority of the institutions adapted focus of their programs and products uh, or reoriented uh, their activities from cultural to humanitarian, which on one hand is a very good sign uh, that organizations are adaptive but on the, uh, and trusted, society trusts them, but on the other hand, they're not doing their core activities. And uh, some organizations uh, stopped uh, their external activities and uh, focused on preservation of the team or, uh, or the property or the collections and, uh, and heritage uh, they are responsible for. And um, also um, s there are some, not many, that uh, focused on creating new projects and programs. Uh, these data uh, come from September, so maybe now, now the situation has slightly changed, but uh, I think more or less it still reflects the reality. <coughs> this, is, uh, this was a very important question for us to ask. Uh, we didn't want um, to provide to European Union uh, the data about suffering poor Ukrainians. We also wanted to share the strengths that uh, Ukraine and especially cultural sector has. And uh, we asked this question, uh, what are your main uh, sources of resilience uh, that you are still staying in Ukraine and operating as a cultural institution or as humanitarian hub? And uh, the most popular answer was uh, adaptability of the team and also um, existing partners and vision of the future. I think this is something very important and we talked about the vision of the future in the, uh, in the first speech. And actually, the majority of people who are participating in this video that Katarina showed, they, their thoughts had been also included uh, in this report. Uh, so you see um, uh, this, vision, this uh, vision of the future, and uh, I, uh, I would say the vision of the victory as well, moves cultural teams uh, forward. And also existing partners, what we see as a very bright source of resilience is horizontal networks while the state uh, provided very little support to, uh, or, or sometimes no support at all uh, to Ukrainian cultural institutions, the partnering, uh, partnerships between uh, organizations inside the country and also with the um, partners abroad actually um, kept uh, um, cultural institutions alive. <clears throat> and um, so what were the key challenges actually um, Loss of funding obviously was uh, the, the biggest challenge, both uh, for programming and also for operational activities. And uh, of course, threat uh, to life and or health uh, was uh, one of the biggest uh, problems for functioning of the sector. Uh, also loss of the team, loss of the audiences uh, sometimes. Uh, actually, it, it was very important, you see uh, almost um, half of the, uh, its fifth place, uh, the pressure, psychological pressure, the need to resist uh, to the Russian um, cultural expansion in the world was an obstacle to function. 
So uh, organization didn't only had to survive and keep their families and organizations alive, but also there was an additional burden to resist um, outside uh, and inside to, to uh, Russian cultural expansion. And also, I would like to mention that some organizations also survived uh, cyber attacks or loss of virtual uh, assets. And uh, lack of emergency instructions was a problem. And we also tried to talk to organizations uh, from the occupied territories, but for, for the obvious reasons, we didn't manage to do that. Um, uh, did you, your institution need support and why? That was uh, the next question. And um, the answer was yes. Um, the two biggest, actually, uh, things that are needed is funding and partnerships. And uh, also platforms to discuss uh, about strategies about the future. And what was nice here that one organization said that we don't need uh, support, but we want to provide support to someone else. Yeah. Um, so these are actually the key hashtags of the report, main needs and main focuses uh, that we uh, took out um, of the whole research and brought to Warsaw to discuss with Ukrainian cultural actors. So um, uh, cross-cutting topics uh, that are needed for recovery and for the future of development uh, are um, uh, talent development, partnerships, long-term vision and strategy, mid-term and long-term support for those who stay in Ukraine, uh, and um, decolonization narrative um, uh, mainstreamed all over the activities, and also finance and digitalization, especially for the cultural heritage, and also for creative industries. Um, markets uh, were, were very important since they lost their markets in Ukraine. And uh, safety issues as a basic need for now, emergency need is also, also very crucial. And uh, I didn't mention the facilities. So now we had this situation changed when, where the big organizations have limitations. They cannot uh, actually conduct their events uh, when they do not have sufficient uh, safe facilities, like big theaters had, have to have a bomb shelter. Uh, for the size of the theater, and sometimes the shelter is much smaller than the theater, so it means that they have to reduce uh, the size of their audience in order to host um, um, their, uh, their audience in the safe place. And sometimes when the theater is relocated, they, uh, there is not, not enough housing to relocate the whole team, even though that there is a facility to host the theater itself. Um, so, um, we uh, divided these needs into the short term, uh, mid term and long term. For the short term is safety, is the preservation of the cultural heritage and preservation of the institutions and their teams and also funding. Oh, there is still a huge problem with the lack of funding and we have this risk that people working in culture can switch to other sectors because they just simply don't have salaries. Uh, Midterm needs is uh, skills development and talent development. We have to adjust very fast uh, to the situation. And uh, English, unfortunately, is one of the biggest problems um, in terms of skills. And also partnership building, capacity building for the institutions, meaning uh, pr processes, procedures, uh, fundraising strategies, finance and management, and so on. Um, and uh, also recovery strategies um, and crisis management as a skill not as the born skill, but as a, a skill for the institution. And for the long term, uh, it is crucial to have vision for, the, for development, uh, policies and procedures, especially for the emergency cases, and um, uh, uh, ensure the sustainability of the institutions. And few words, I'm finishing already, few words about this meeting in war. So, um, so the task for it was to verify the needs and design some recommendations. Um, I would name, if you do not mind, I, I would name these uh, people in the room who are participating there and maybe later they could also share with you the findings of this workshop. I think maybe not, not the outcomes were so important as such, but the discussion uh, and the 
topics that we raised there uh, were uh, actually very interesting and uh, it could be continued further in different uh, groups of people. So Ilyasa Bolotny was there, <laughs> she's just sitting directly. So. And um, Mikhailo Gluboki, uh, Irena Chuzinova is also in the room, Anastasia Hyshenets from Ukrainian Institute. And uh, I, I saw Anna Pohrivna from Aesthetic Arsenal was also on the agenda. I don't know whether she's in the room, she's not, okay. So these are the people who were participating and 20 more uh, people were there. Um, just um, 15 minutes walk from here. And what did we actually discuss? Um, we discussed that it is important for us to think about Ukrainian culture as from the ecosystemic point of view, uh, as a living system that is interconnected. Um, all cultural institutions, both coming from the um, national level, regional level, local level, both public and private, both in Ukraine and abroad, from different sectors uh, with different focus of activities, um, to cooperate as the one living organism. And um, the main topics that had been discussed are cultural diplomacy and cultural product, how uh, it's actually connected and how, what do we do to make, uh, to increase the quality of the product and the visibility of Ukrainian cultural diplomacy. Also local governance and infrastructure, uh, everything starts from the roots. What can we do to improve the preservation of the cultural heritage on the ground, to raise the um, capacity of the teams, cultural teams working in the regions, and uh, what can we do to actually improve the infrastructure. Capacity of the institutions uh, as such, we were talking that there are some institutions that are role models and that can be invited to the workshops like this one. Um, but it's limited number of institutions. Uh, so what is important to share this capacity further to other institutions working in Ukraine, and these large institutions can actually serve like hubs, capacity building hubs. Their capacity can be strengthened and then they can uh, strengthen the capacity of others as well. And uh, the need of the network for cultural actors was also um, discussed in this uh, group and talent development as something crucial. Um, we were actually talking about three dimensions of this, screening, uh, screening of the talents, development of the talents, and keeping of the talents. It's very important um, because we have the situation of brain drain now in Ukraine. It's very important to keep the cultural uh, talents inside the country. And um, uh, what else we had developed best practices for each topic for this uh, from these recommendations. We, we discussed what do we think are the best practices and uh, it was very good uh, to discover that there are good practices both in Ukraine and uh, outside of Ukraine and we can take some examples and uh, um, relate to it and continue. Uh, developing something like that. Unfortunately, these best practices are not included in the report, but that's why I named you. Um, all these people who were participating, uh, they, uh, they can share, I hope. <laughs> I didn't ask them before, but I hope uh, that uh, they would not mind. And uh, the last, um, some focus areas that actually we didn't have a lot of people coming to discuss these topics. And this is very important. It means that there is a lack of attention, at least in this audience, there was a lack of attention to, this, to these topics. Um, we didn't have many people who were, were willing to discuss enabling environment policies and regulations for culture. It's a boring topic, I know, but... Um, and we had this... Um, we had this... Uh, these phrases that... There are some people that have to do policies. It's not us, we are doing art and, and culture, we are not doing policies. And this is actually the problem, because uh, unless uh, Ukrainian cultural actors are agents of influencing policies and regulations, it would be done by someone else. And uh, that's very important to empower Ukrainian cultural actors to participate in the policy-making process, both in the national, regional, and local level. Also, stakeholder cooperation. Since uh, each institution is busy with its own uh, emergency issues, there are not many platforms for dialogue, and I'm very happy that 
this platform is, is here and some other platforms are, are in place as well, but there is no um, sustainable networks or sustainable platforms where regularly people are talking to each other and this is also very important for development. And last but not the least, the cross-cutting issues, we didn't cover them in our report because we think these issues need separate reports and should be explored further is the issue of strategies for reintegration of occupied territories, uh, issue of preservation of cultural heritage and um, in-depth research by each sector. And um, as my last word, this actually, it, um, as my last word, I would like to say that I'm traveling, it's my third event in the row during the uh, several weeks, and I was participating in the uh, um, Summer Academy for Culture and Creative Industries and Local Development in Italy, and I just came from Istanbul, that was a forum for creative policy makers, a global for bo both there were global events, uh, people from all continents were present there, and we were talking that um, culture-driven strategies for development are crucial for the globe, and creative economy is a new strategy for development. And uh, this is not only discussed by people from culture, it's also discussed by people from, um, actually this school in, US in uh, Italy was organized by OECD, Organization of uh, Social and Economic Development. And uh, so people from the ministries, people from the ministries of economies, from in the Ministry of Finance, uh, are now trying uh, or at least coming together with people uh, from culture and discuss the role of culture in global development. I, and I think that uh, this is a very good sign. And the I mean, Ministry of Culture of Ukraine was present in Istanbul and uh, the, the lady Lisa Moroz, um, who was presenting from Ukraine, uh, she gathered a big round of applause, and it sounds that Ukraine is is on the cutting edge of this culture for the development. And I think that uh, it's um, that we already have a big expertise in that because of this eight months um, of, resi of resilience. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for attention, and please uh, ask the questions. Yeah, um, I think. I think you do, I do not have time for the questions, but in the breaks, please welcome. Yeah. Uh, Katrina.